Jacksonville Water and Sewer Advisory Committee. The you already done that. The <coughs> August the 14th, 2014. We're out at the land treatment facility on Fire Tower Road. We need a adoption of the agenda. Do we have anybody want to change anything? Do we need any? Yes, sir. I'd like to see if it's the board agree to put the tour of the land application site after the adjournment, adjourn to the tour. While we're here, let's go ahead and knock out the meeting and then just go on the tour after that. I second. We have a motion and we have a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, well, I don't vote for it. <laughs> All right. Approval of the minutes, July 10th meeting. 2014. Do we have a motion? I make a motion that we accept the minutes as written. A second. Okay. Any discussion on this? All in favor, signify by raising your hand. Okay, carried. <coughs> Grease report. Yes, me. We're going to put you next. <laughs> How are we all doing tonight? Um, the Grease report is as follows. We have a total of 169 external grease traps and 45 internal for a grand total of 214. And out of those, we had 17 paperwork violations. And um, eight of those were first time offenders and nine were repeat. And um, they're getting a whole lot better. I don't know what's causing them to get better with their paperwork, but the numbers for violations are going down every month. You still you show here nine repeat offenders. Is that on the paperwork? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you have any discussion on this? Any questions that would like to be asked? Are there too many reports of a lot of new places coming along? I know it's getting busy out there. Not, not last month. I didn't really have <coughs> any new grease traps. But I don't know <laughs> the next month here. Is that all you That's have? It? Okay. Old business. Anybody have any old business that I'd like to bring up? Farming? Farm, anybody? Anybody <coughs> have any old business? All right, moving right along, as Carmen would say. New business. Do we have any new business other than? What I have here. No other new business? Okay, I'm going to yeah, let me get it here. Planning board. <clears throat> we had several text amendments and all like that. That was all we had this coming Monday well this last Monday. And I have we elected the chairman, that was a Homer Spring. Vice chairman was Al Keyes. <clears throat> All right, now I have here reports that were given on the updates of the planning board June 4th through June the 10th. 4200 and 4250 Western Boulevard. They've submitted a site plan from Castro Real Southeast Realty Services for a 6,400 6, 64,000 square foot shopping center on 11 acres of land. It's going to have three buildings. The primary one is going to be 41,000 square feet. A junior at 12,000 square feet, and a tenant unit at 9,900 square feet. Now this is on Western Boulevard. Out of the extension end, down someplace? On the extension end? Yes. <coughs> I assume so, but it doesn't say on this, but I would assume that's where it's at. This is something the planning board does not do anymore. It's in-house. All oh, this is done in-house now. We don't get to sit out. During that same time period, they issued 119 permits. Now, those are for 
a little bit of anything. Add the bathroom to your house, a room. It's not just all building for uh, new things. Uh, here, let's see. Proposed redevelopment at 400 Western Boulevard. This is down the other end, going to 24. A redevelopment of the current First Bank into a retail development. That's all it has on it. doesn't tell what kind of new business may be going in there. June 11th through June 17th, 62 permits were issued at the corner of Hem Hemlock Drive and Piney Green Road. There they have submitted a grocery store and a gas station on 11 acre track. We have a 42 thousand square foot grocery store and a 4,400 square foot gas station. Hemlock Drive and Piney Green Road where that's going to be at. So I assume that's out somewhere. I, I have, it doesn't say on here and I, it was not brought up before so I have no other information about where that is located on Piney Green Road. <clears throat> June 18th through June 24th 92 permits were issued, 344 Carolina Forest Boulevard, another gas station and convenience store. That is in discussion. They have not submitted a site plan as yet. 1002 Gum Ranch Road. They've, the staff talked to the Auto Bright car wash there. That should be right there by where Food Line and all is going up. Across, what was the name of that, Joe? Do you know that big house? In, across from Taco Bell, anyhow, there. In regards to major redevelopment. At 3494 West Boulevard, they are discussing about a multi unit shopping center. Uh, that <clears throat> it's going to be similar to the building that is home to the Noodles and Company and to the right of the Longhorn Steakhouse. Going to be there. June 25th through July 1st. Uh, let's see what they have. Kia, Stevenson Kia, 500 and 502 Fairway Road. They're proposing a 2,100 square foot expansion to their already existing 24,000 automotive sales and service building. Morton's Crossing at 1010 Henderson Drive. They've submitted a plan for a 6,000 square foot retail building. In the Littleton office building at 3275 Newburn Highway, that's Highway 17, submitted a site plan for proposed, <coughs> proposed 3,000 square foot retail and office building. Uh, oh, let's see, Carolina Forest Elementary. They're going to add, they've asked to add four additional modular classrooms totaling 3,400 square feet. This will make a total of 11 modular be put in there for a total for the whole school of 94,000 square feet. They issued 71 building permits during that same period. July 2nd through July 8th. CCCC, which is Coastal Carolina, is at 40 at 444 Western Boulevard is adding a jogging track. So you all go out there and jog. Dunkin' Donuts in front of Lowe's Foods at the end of Western Extension. Broad Creek Holding Company has submitted a site plan for a 2,493 square foot building. That's Dunkin' Donuts, not Krispy Kreme? No. Nope. It's not the same spot? Dunkin' Donuts. Krispy Kreme is going to be down the road across from Marine Federal. Oh, okay. Now, I was told that the if you go down there, you'll notice there's a road that turns. They're, they're putting in a new building there. There's going to be three or four shops right there. They've already got it halfway complete. If you turn down that road, you go back to the cinema back there. Well, it's on the other side of that road there in the front. Where Krispy Kreme, they have not started doing any construction, clearing the land, or anything. Pet Smart on the corner of Yop Road and Richlands Highway is going to add a 12,000 square foot building. 
plus an additional 6,600 square feet for future space. 59 permits were issued uh, during that same period. Now it's the planning staff has met with Thomas and Hutton Engineering about putting a gas station on the corner of Western and Carolina Forest Boulevards. A lot of money to be made in gas stations. Uh, you know, building permits for July 9th through July 15th, 62 of them. Port City Java Coffee Shop. They're going to renovate 102 Marine Boulevard. That's out just past City Hall up there. In Old Chicago Pizza and Tap Room, they're going to do an uplift on their facility at 4157 Western Boulevard. Where is that at? Uh, I, I've never heard of it. Old heard of? City Java is the place that was the bar. Oh, yeah, yeah, and it was the old Taco Bell. Yeah, but the, the old Taco Bell was that? Remember the old Taco Bell? Oh, yeah, down the there. But no, yeah, but the old pizza and tap room, where is that one at? I don't West. know where that old Chicago pizza is. 4157 Western? 4157. And then next to Hilda's, that little shopping center in there, across from the hospital. That's, that's going to be up on the East. Well, they're going to do an, an uplift. They're going to improve it. That's going to be much less than They got one down in Wilmington. <laughs> July 16th through July 22nd, 73 permits were issued. First Bank on Western Boulevard has submitted a site plan for a 7,606 square foot bank on a one and a half acre tract. It will also include 1,800 square feet of canopy. 608 610 New Bridge Street. Kim Chai N. What would you consider that word? <laughs> Bulgogi? Bulgogi <laughs> House. Restaurant. That's good food. Kimchi and Bulgogi House. Restaurant. Oh, it's New Bridge Street is going to be 1,500 square feet. <coughs> you see it? Kimchi. That's correct. Yeah. 2025 North Marine Boulevard. It's a three They have not <laughs> picked a contract yet, but a proposed Burger King that will be inside the existing Walmart. 600 North Marine Boulevard, Unit 500, is in the uplift for Lazar's Pizza. I assume that may be Mike Lazar's at 2,400 square feet. It's the same little shopping center that the new subway is in. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that, is that Mike's? Yes. I would yeah. think so. I don't think there are that many Lazar's in town, are there? It's yeah. kind of like I use those, isn't it? Probably <laughs> got Michael Andrews. Um, Patriot Park, Section 1, Piney Green Road. We're going to put a subdivision in there, Parker and Associates. Now, it doesn't say exactly where that will be out on Piney Green Road, but it'd be 203 lots on a 103 acre track. Well, that apartment development they have out there is called Patriot Park. Yeah. Well, Patriot Park, if it's the one that the city's been involved with, is just past White Oak High School right. on the left if you're coming from Highway 17. Yeah. Yeah. Is it in the ETJ? Or? Yes. Okay. Well, they, they satellite in it. The Jacksonville VA outpatient clinic on Henderson Drive, they finally decided that they're going to start now building on it. They asked for a larger building and parking area than was what was previously approved. And it is now going to be almost 16,000 square feet. And there was uh, 62 permits issued during that time period. July 30th through August the 5th. 1036 Arlington Meadows at Meadows Gate. They're going to pr propose subdivision of 800 of 8.96 acres. We're going to have two lots. Will be rather large homes in there. And they issued 69 building permits. Where is that at? Where's Arlington? Where's Meadows? Arlington? Is that Williams? Lynchburg? Arlington over there across the western side. Well, that's going to have two, two lots, so there's going to be 
it will be a good size line. That's all on the planning board for this period. We didn't have a meeting in July. Uh, on Wassa, they did not have a meeting this past Tuesday. They will have one next month. And that's all I have on that. I got a question. All these, <laughs> what? All these numbers and all that kind of stuff, how many gallons of our water and sewer are they planning on using up? They did not give that to us. Why not? Because they didn't. Is there any way we can get it? Uh, possibly. It would be nice to know. You know next well, five years you know, we're that's, that's Eat up a million gallons of your water. But see, know. all this is done with staff, and it doesn't come before us as a board sitting there. Like we used to. Well, staff can do it. So not you know, staff is going to have to come either from Wally, because it's got to go through his office. We can because uh, they've got somebody's got to prove it there. We can get that. Or planning should be able to have it, and I'll, I'll ask. Uh, we should be able to get it and have it provided the next meeting. Okay. That'd be nice. If that would go with this this report from planning, then then we can coordinate how much they. Because now you're going to have to have. Several of those are going to be grease trap, I'm sure, when they start building, you know, yes, Krispy Kreme and Dunkin' Donuts yes. and all the other, a couple other restaurants are going to have <laughs> If I could remind the board that we've had this discussion before, and uh, Wally told us that before the planning board finishes their thing to present to the, the planning board, the staff runs it through the engineer of the water and sewer. So we are to assume that there is adequate capacity for that. Now, for the specific question, we'd have to ask Pete to take back to the director and ask for how much is being used up and how much would be left. But when we asked, the board asked that question in the past, we were reassured that before it goes to the planning board, or we have a gentleman that does the run those numbers to make sure, because otherwise we could ask the question, hey, is this going to require new construction? And the answer was right. no, because this is within our capacity if it got this far. So I remind the board of that <clears throat> conversation. Well, with the new lagoons and all here and the new water plant, we have sufficient quantities of water and, and surge capacity. Well, the other thing <clears throat> Before that, we didn't, you know. The other thing that comes up is where all that construction is, because there were some pipes that were at capacity or undersized, and depending on so where all that... pump stations and all like that, that would have to pump. Depending on where those inflows yeah. are, is that going to change any of your time scales? Like move one up from a lower level up to a higher level because of that planned construction in that area. So double checking to make sure it's not going to have to change your priority for anything. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll consult with Wally and Greg Nishaw, our senior civil engineer. We'll have something to bring back to you, what our available capacity is now. How much it's this is going to use? Because the, the growth is in various areas, and I know some you were looking at upgrading because they were at at right. limited size and right now. Right. Now, see, several years ago, that information would come to planning board. Same thing on Wassa, but now it's been taken out of the planning board. Actually, they're it's it's all done in house now. It goes to the water, it goes to engineering, it goes to the police department, the fire department, everybody signs off on it. We don't even see any of that, nothing like that anymore. So we're going to have to ask if, if Pete can get some of this or talk to Wally and see what we can do about that. I'll talk to Pam down at the planning board and see and we can coordinate the two of them together. How much each new place, what they ask, you know, they're going to be using and all. We we may end up being a month behind on the data, but we we'll, we'll be able we should be able to get you a little bit more current than what you. You should want. be able to do uh, the water and the surge both, can't you? Yes, sir. Okay, that would be. We'll get the same that. person. The same person allocates for both. Does the sewer allocation, yeah. the water allocation, and so all that information is available. We just find the projects that that planning board has on their list that you're going to bring to this board, and we'll have that information. And we'll try to have something compiled for you. This, they just started giving this to me last month, planning for Pam Cunningham, yes, sir. executive secretary down there. She, I asked her about it, and she's been good enough to get this up so I could present it here. So we just, you know, if you can get the other part, we'll have that for us. Shouldn't be too difficult. Any other questions on any of that? Okay, due to Mr. Aragonas' motion and all...
Mr. Oh, Chairman, I'm sorry. I'll go ahead and wait. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, first, first of all, um, Wally extends his regards. Unfortunately, he cannot be here. Um, literally, he took one for the team last night at a, <laughs> at a sports sporting event. So uh, Why are you laughing first? <laughs> we're, not, we're not. We're laughing with him. We're not uh, laughing. Yeah, I bet you <laughs> uh, but unfortunately, he cannot be here, but he does extend his regards. Um, prior to a journey for the tour, if, if you would allow, I'd like to go over this, And but first I'd like to introduce, we have some staff here that I'd like to introduce so you can put some names and faces together and understand, and if they, uh, I may call on them to, you know, if you have specific questions and something, um, they're out here day in, day out, I am not, so um, they are the, the regional experts on this, so with that, if, if it's alright Mr. Chairman. Uh, first and foremost, to, to my immediate left, this is William Brown, who's our new chief wastewater treatment plant operator. He officially started Monday in this position. He is a 20-plus uh, year veteran with the city of Jacksonville, has previous history here the first 10 years, correct? Uh, middle 10 years. Middle 10 years, okay. And then when the, when the plant was going on and then he transferred to the water treatment plant, when the uh, nano filtration plant was being built, he was basically there from the first turn of the dirt to the completion. Um, and now he's um, come back out here to uh, for this, to take over as this. Uh, right behind him is Thomas Humphrey, who's one of the seven um, plant operators here that take care of the uh, spray fields and stuff. Uh, he uh, is one of the six. Uh, if you know Novella and you know Gavin, one of the seven, excuse me. Um, in the corner is uh, uh, Walt Rhodes, who we affectionately call Butch uh, as a nickname. Butch is a 28-plus uh, year veteran. Uh, most of, all of his stuff has been in wastewater, if I'm not mistaken, Butch. Is that correct? All seven plus years. Okay, so 27 plus years in the wastewater side, one plus year on the water side. Butch is our uh, he is our crew leader, supervisor out here. Um, his responsibilities. Uh, not limited to, but maintaining the roads and the, the spray lanes, um, keeping the, 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 the dams manicured, excuse me, the berms uh, manicured so we can do our berm inspections, make sure we don't have any issues with that. Um, that's probably his primary stuff. Anything else you want to chime in with at this time? Actually just keeping it so that operators can get hurt. Right. Yeah. So as, as far as joint and to Butch's left is Miss Regina Myers, who is another one of our operators. Uh, she's going on six months here with us, and she hit the ground running. She had a very short learning curve, um, so we were very fortunate to have her as well. Um, so with that, um, and you guys know Joe already. So <laughs> um, but with that, I just have a couple. I passed around the map. Um, it, it's it's a ten thousand foot view of this facility. Um, and for, for a general reference, if you look at the, um, down in the bottom, the black, there's a little black square, two little black rectangle shaped squares. That's where we currently are. That's this admin building now. Um, and just some quick bullets, and then we'll, we'll move forward. And any questions you want to have, we have, yeah, I'll try to answer them, or the, the group there behind you will. Initially, we were built for 6 million gallons, as you know. Uh, we expanded to 9 million gallons, probably 2008, 2009 time frame, something like that. Um, the lagoon capacities, um, the, as you came in, the <coughs> large lagoon on the left we call the south lagoon. Um, as you're coming in from the gate, that uh, was designed to hold 360 million gallons. The larger lagoon on the left, I mean, excuse me, on the right as you came in is what we call the east lagoon. That was that combined with the West Lagoon was combined to hold 362 million gallons. The aeration trains, which is the smaller square right next to the West and the East, um, according to our state permit, and this number is one that we've got to I've got to work on, but according to the state permit, it was designed to hold 7.5 million. Some say it holds up to 60 million, so that's a number that I've got to try to lock in. There's a big difference there, but it's in our state permit is what I pulled out. So that, in a nutshell, is the size of the lagoons, and I'll, I'll go on record, just because we have that much storage doesn't mean that we can handle that much. Um, we, we can handle, the, the, the flow is designed to bring in every day, uh, but it makes us nervous when we go above a certain foot depth in the, in the lagoons. State permit says we must maintain 
a minimum two foot freeboard. So one of the other ones I think is three foot, isn't it? Or they all two? It's all two feet. All two feet, okay. Two That's low, why. To the lowest, to the lowest elevation of the burn. That's why William's here. Uh, <laughs> um, we spray on uh, roughly 2,331 2, acres of the 7,400 acres that is owned by the city of Jacksonville. So we're maybe uh, using a third of the land that we have. There's over 21,000 sprinkler heads. Uh, there's a map on that wall and there's a map here. All these little dots are sprinkler heads. Um, so that's what uh, Thomas and Regina pretty much do every day is make sure those are uh, where they need to be. Um, as you first come in, and we'll see when we do the tour, the very first unit that you see on the right-hand side is what we call the hyprox. It's hydrogen peroxide is injected, and that's primarily an odor control. Um, this, there is some populated places out here, and they will call if it starts to smell. They will call and give us a hard time. Uh, so, And then uh, we'll come up with what we call the headworks, which is the grit removal and aeration process. Um, and then the final, which from the time it enters to the time it leaves is about six to seven days. And before it leaves, down at the far end down there, which we'll go past, is the chlorine building where it's injected with chlorine as part of the final disinfection process. Um, here, including the chemist and the lab supervisor, there are 17 employees that take care of this, this facility. You have the seven operators and the chief operator. Butch has three staff members underneath of him. And our plant maintenance side has four. We have two mechanics and two maintenance workers. That's the only people that take care of the stuff out here. Um, there are roughly 317 miles of pipe, two inch and larger, in those trees out there um, that, that they maintain. Um, Butch and his crew have about 50, roughly 50 miles of roadway to maintain. Through the, through the summer, through the winter, through the wet periods. Um, the, the lagoons, when the non-dissolvable solids and stuff, when they settle, turns into a sludge in the bottom of the lagoons. Right now, there's around between four and a half and five and a half feet of sludge in the bottom of those lagoons, which is taking capacity away from us. Um, we spend, last time we did it, I think it was 2011, so it turns out 10, 2011, we spent $300,000 just removing the sludge out of the aeration lagoons. How so do you do that? Literally, you have to drain them down and have somebody come in and, and pump it out, suck it out, put it in the truck, and then it has to go to a state permitted sludge application site. Do they have somebody in a boat that goes out there with that? Is it like sludge in a septic tank? Not quite no. that easy. Go ahead, Butch. What well, they do is they set it up, they've got a machine that runs like the water right. down into it and they keep it pushed with water to it that will pump it from the bottom of the lagoon into the truck and the truck transit forms it from here out to the field and sprays it and uh, land flies it back over. quite a few truckloads then, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. They yeah, usually come in here about three tractor trailers. It's, it's a busy time. Right. How often do you have to do it? The permit requires every three to five years. It, it depends on, um, well, fu funding is an issue this year. Um, so, it, and it depends. We try to stretch it out. There's some, there's some ideas that we're coming up with. We're working on are in the very, very infancy stages of it. One being looking possibly we have land we're not using here. If we could somehow maybe log it, clear it, and if we could get it permitted, maybe we could make our own sludge application site. Because what costs us the most is the trucks having to haul it away to a specific state permitted site. They're very, they're not that close to us, and it's that travel time. So that's one thing. The other thing uh, I've briefly talked to Wally about was creating a capital project and just funding instead of trying to hit the budget. Dr. Woodruff likes that, that flat, no spikes in the budget type graph. Well, if we could turn it into a capital project and maybe allocate $100,000 a year, then every, every three to five years we have the funding available to do a CIP project for sludge removal, and then we start right back over you know, budgeting money again and just allocate it that way, which would give us that flat, that flat line that he, he prefers where, so there's no spikes. So that's one of the issues that we're going to be trying to work on here in the very near future. Do you have any of the analyses that they usually do for the sludge 
prior to learning application because they have to know what its nutrients and all that fun stuff are. Yes, that's uh, more of a uh, our chemist question, which fortunately she's not here. Yeah. But we can we can get you those. Yeah, but we do have it. Yes. Okay, because that's one of the things that helps dictate how much of it can go where. And, and you were probably right on your two numbers when you said the sixty thousand a million gallons and then the seven and a half, because you've got a seven day residence time and you're treating eight million gallons. That gets you up to near fifty million gallons worth of space. Of most sensible numbers are probably right. Okay. So some of it is sprayed here, and some of it, most, but most of it's hauled away? Is that no. what you're saying? The, the, only, the treated water is irrigated, but part of the process is sedimentation, mm -hmm. and the settable solids settle out. Mm -hmm. And as it settle out, settles out, then the bacteria begins the treatment process, but over time it creates a sludge bed mm -hmm. in the bottom of the lagoon. Or bacteria cells. Right. So any of that sludge, all of that goes to that state approved site. None of that is spread here. Gotcha. We're, we're not permitted to spread it here. Gotcha. But it is something we're going to look into. Look into. And okay. if we can take advantage of some of this land that we mm -hmm. currently are not using for spray, if it's feasible, cost effective, if it's not, we haven't lost anything to at least look at it. Look at it. You know, yeah. Trying to think outside the box a little bit. Some places look at drying and composting it too. There is also, that's another thing, there was a company that contacted us about getting our sludge. They would like to have it for compost. Um, they are, a product for them. They are, yeah, so we're going to be hopefully meeting with them in the near future to see if it's, you know, what their idea was, if it's something they want to come and take for free and we just give it to them or if we have to pay them versus paying the sludge removal people. So we, we just have to work it out, but that is an option that's on the table as well. Is that the outfit that brings in the plate and frame? trucks, presses it, and then loads it and carries it on? Yeah, it's very possible, sir. I, we haven't gotten that far into the details. I don't even know the name of the company. Somebody, uh, Greg Michal told me that uh, they had contacted us and were in the works of getting back with them to set up a meeting out here for them. There are a couple, actually, in the area that do that, so <coughs> it might be a case if, if that's something that you're interested in, you could send out information saying anybody interested to, to come back and approach right. you about that. Well, what, what we're interested in is the most cost-effective and feasible way that keeps our plant online the most. Okay. Obviously, we have to take some lagoons offline to, to get the sludge out of them. So um, whatever keeps us up and running the most and is most cost-effective is definitely what we're interested in. So. Doesn't Raleigh compost? Yes, they do. They have a very large yeah, big long area. slabs and they're detracted to turn it over every yep. so often. Um, part part of the maintenance that Butch and his and his staff do is the mowing inside this fence and around the fencing. If I'm not mistaken, Butch, that takes you about three and a half days every two weeks, somewhere in that. So just what you see, the grass around the berms, the flat parts here inside this fence and around the outside the front, takes them three and a half days just to mow this. Other than aesthetics, why do you mow it? Well, one, we have to keep an inspection on the berms, make sure they're not eroding away. If you've got taller grass, you can't see it. Um, two is, you know, aesthetics. Um, you know, this is a $100 million investment, and we want to make sure it looks like a $100 million investment. We're proud of it. We want to you know, keep it looking like a $100 million, $100 million investment. You also have to make sure things like trees don't start growing Cutting well, you're going to see a little bit of trees in the lagoons, um, and it's it's more risky to take them out than to let them just stay where they are. If we we don't want to damage the liners, that's twenty two hundred dollars a day to come in and fix it. So it's part of our our maintenance stuff, but but primarily so we can keep it on the berms. So the berms have to be maintained, and that and that's what's most time consuming because he has what's called a slope mower, mm -hmm. and. Obviously, it's just that he gets up there. He's 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 up and down perpendicular, you know, mm -hmm. fine. But the the deck is tilted, and it's it's risky, and it's a slow process. But it has to be done. Um, there are in the spray field itself. That was actually brought up a couple of years ago. As we go out into the spray field at, at part of the tour, um, you'll see some of them. But there's 144 valves inside the infrastructure, inside this 300 plus miles of pipe. And those valves they use to manipulate the spray areas. They get maintenance a lot. Um, sometimes they break. They're all original for the most part. 
we do have a large valve change out program coming. It's going to make this plant, it's going to have to go offline for about five days. Um, we're not comfortable with the boom levels right now. We'd like to have them down. I'd like to have them lower than eight. William has mentioned he'd like to have them around six. So, you know, we, we've had a lot of rain. We got to do it with <coughs> rain, good weather, no storms forecasted, no hurricanes. So, the timing has to be good with that. But we've got the materials in, and you know, so it's it's going to be a process. It's going to involve a contractor. It's going to involve two of Gavin's crews coming out here to help, plus the crew here. Because we're going to do some of this stuff in house, um, some of the smaller valves that we know we can change in a reasonable time, and that's going to cuts down on the price as well. And, uh, gets everything back where it should go. <coughs> and the last uh, last little bullet that I have here, and then we'll open it for discussion or whatever, um, is our forestry management program. You all know we had the, the deal with the trees that were dying a few years ago, and a lot of people were up in arms, and we brought in a lot of people. Um, bottom line is this is our third year of the forestry management program, and it's the best year we've had so far. Uh, there were a lot of issues in the beginning, I will tell you up front, Thomas will tell you, Regina wasn't here, but Butch was here. It was a nightmare. There was one zone that they went in completely demolished. It was a year plus to get it back online. Uh, that was quite a bit of wastewater that we couldn't spray because of the damages. Since then, we've gotten a tighter written contract. We've gotten responsible loggers in who aren't as concerned as production as they are quality. Um, if they get their eight truckloads a day, they're happy. So that works out for us. It works out for them. Right now, it's going smoothly, knock on wood. Hope I don't jinx it, but uh, that's going very well. So and as we go out, I'll show you an area that um, that's getting ready to be uh, worked on. It's going to be clear cut. Um, it's supposed to be the end of this month, beginning of September. Uh, so. I have a question since yes, you're mentioning rainfall. How many surface acres are the lagoons? That's a good question. Let's see if it's in the permit. I do have a copy. I have a copy of the permit if anybody wants to see it, but it's my only copy, so. I don't have that number. I mean, I'd have to sit there and do the math and break it down for you. But it, it gets back to the, the rainfall thing with one inch of rain on, a, on an 27, acre land is twenty-seven thousand gallons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, if you have ten acres, that's two hundred seventy thousand gallons right there, and I'm sure you have more than ten acres. Um, West lagoon is twenty-seven acres. East lagoon is seventy acres, and the south lagoon is seventy-nine point one six acres. Say it again. That's why. Say it again, here. please. West Lagoon is 27 acres, East Lagoon is 70 acres, and the South Lagoon is 79.16 acres. So roughly about 180, roughly 180 acres. That's a lot of water for one drain, and I know in July we had over 10. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a lot of pumping right there just from all that water. Right. We have, how many rain gauges do we have, Virginia? Nine. Nine rain gauges in the field plus the one up here. So we have ten rain gauges. We just installed one up here and tied it into the mission, the mission SCADA that I've shown in the past. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll have, they have manual ones that they, they read out in the field. Every morning they go collect it to know whether they can spray or not. And, and by the way, before I forget, the land and the weather dictate whether we spray or not. If we have a half inch or more of rain, we cannot spray, regardless. Um, so, well, but that's having a tough time waiting with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have. In the rain, yes. Right. And, yeah. Um, and yeah, that, that makes it even tougher. One, one of the monitoring things that we've done is, like I said, with the missions, we actually installed it where we can um, monitor the levels of the lagoons. So I, I can pull up all the supervisors, the operators, everybody here can pull it up and see what the lagoon levels are. So if we are having a rain event, or on, you know, we're home at the weekend, um, you know, William has the ORC, um, Butch is a backup ORC, and there's, there's two others. If they're curious, they could pull up and see, you know, what the lagoon levels are so we know, because obviously when it's raining, we can't spray. 
but they'll be able to keep an eye on it and monitor it. It's just another way to, to monitor um, for that stuff. So, um, But with that, Mr. Chairman, that's kind of the bullets I wanted to hit. Uh, we can discuss it in here in detail, or if you'd like, we have a van outside. We're ready. We can put you in the van, and we'll go start the tour. I'd like to ask you one question before yes, sir. we get done. Um, year, year and a half ago or so, they were having problems with the trees, and they had two yes, or three different people come in. Yes, sir. What was the outcome of that? Um, what, there, what was caused that? There, there was, my understanding, which you might know a little bit more than I do, there was no clearly decisive one thing is the problem. The one thing that we did recognize is we i.e. the city, was not fully engaging our forestry management program as we should have. Since we've started that, we are seeing some progress. We actually have, uh, did they plant the new trees yet at the intersection? Yeah. Thank you. We have four tree test beds now to see which species of tree will survive out here the best. There's eucalyptus, white ash, uh, what else we got? I forgot, I don't know, there's like four different species of trees. We'll go by, we'll see two of them at least during the tour. Um, but that's part of what NC State is doing as well. It's determined what species, one, grows fast, two, will take the water and live in these conditions. So that's, that's an ongoing process. But there really was, my understanding, no clearly defined, this is the main culprit, you know, pH or overwatering, underwatering, lightning strikes. You know, poor forestry management. Yeah. It was it was probably a combination of things. So, one more quick question: How often do you have the loggers out here? Is it an ongoing thing, or do they no. every other year? Or? It, it, it's a yearly thing. The problem is the peak logging season is our peak spraying season. Yeah. So the the three hundred pound gorilla, if I could use that <laughs> term, is accommodating them to get the forestry management portion done yet accommodating us to get our spray going, to keep our spray fields going. We have to shut an area when they're going to go in to do their work, uh, standing or clear cutting, we have to turn the valves off at least two weeks ahead of time to allow time to dry out for them to go in there and do their work. Then they have to go in and do their work. We realize they're going to damage our stuff. It's going to, it's inevitable. We can deal with it as long as it's minor stuff. And so far, like I said, knock on wood, we haven't had that big of an issue. When they're done, We'll go in there and start turning the valves back on, seeing what the damage is and making those repairs while they're preparing to move to another section. And so we'll turn that area off while we turn this area back on and kind of cycle it that way. Um, you know, the main thing, again, it's a 20-year plan, so if you're, if you're clear-cutting over in Zone 1, by the time you've come all the way through, back around, and gone through the whole entire 7,400 acres, it's probably 20 years or longer, yeah. so you're right back to year one, and it's just completes that tree cycle cycling program like Weyerhaeuser and um, the other forestry companies do, is that cyclic and replanting. This year, what we're trying is once they're done, within two weeks of them being done, they have to come back in, row it up, and replant the trees. And how we spray is regulated in our permit for the new trees, anything that's been logged. It's, it's a third the first year and then two-thirds the second year, that's all we can spray on those areas. So that limits our spraying there as well until those trees actually take root and start to grow. And then we could go back to our normal spraying cycle. So that, that in turn limits our spraying capabilities as well. So rain's not our friend all the time. So. Anybody have anything else? I would take a motion to adjourn and reconvene out on a curve through the facility. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Make a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. We got it.